As all of us know, PCs are noisy machines, although they don't have to be. When you build a PC cheaply, you get more noise. Take this average budget white box. It's exactly the sort of thing a business would buy as a basic productivity machine for a cubicle. An average speed CPU, a couple gigs of memory, a low capacity hard drive, integrated graphics, and Windows Vista. This box kicks out 40 decibels at a listening distance of one meter, sometimes 45 decibels under a heavy load. This is the noise level you'd expect in a quiet office. The catch is that the sound levels are additive. Put eight 40 decibel computers together and you'll have 58 decibels of ambient noise, about the same as a noisy restaurant. You can't afford to work around that. On paper, this white box looks about identical to its cousin. Similar speeds, capacities, and so on. This machine, however, puts out only 25 decibels. That's a whisper to you and me. The difference is that this box adheres to AMD's cool and quiet PC definition, a set of guidelines that AMD recently made to help promote quieter, more power efficient systems for only a few dollars more. But let's back up a step and break this problem down. A cool and quiet PC starts with one of AMD's latest Athlon X2 dual core CPUs, specifically the BE2300, 2350, or 2400 chips ranging from 1.9 to 2.3 gigahertz. This marks a 44% drop in thermal design power from comparable Athlon 64 X2 chips. The graphics processor gets a bad rap for being a noise monster, but this reputation usually comes from top-end gamer cards, which average around 43 decibels at idle, up to 53 decibels under load. And it's true, people who buy these cards for gaming rarely care about noise. But for people who want good graphics performance without the fan noise, there are two options. First, you can go with an add-in card like the ATI Radeon HD2400 Pro. This model can feature all-passive silent cooling thanks to its sub-25 watt power profile but still deliver DirectX 10, HDMI, and all the other features home theater PC buyers crave. Going with integrated graphics saves even more power. The AMD 690 Northbridge consumes a modest 8 watts, but the 690G, even with its integrated graphics running at full bore, chews through less than 14 watts. This is why the 690G can get by with only a passive heatsink rather than a noisy cooling fan. Even though these cool and quiet components are great on performance per watt, they still generate heat. So now your job is to get the heat out of the PC. We're not talking about water cooling here or fancy heat piping or multi hundred dollar heat sink cases. A cool and quiet platform does not mean going crazy on costs. It means you need to be smarter about the fans and heat sinks you already have. On the CPU, realistically, a standard aluminum heat sink fan is fine for these 45 watt chips. You can be a little more efficient with an all-copper CPU heatsink, but the real goal is to pick a heatsink fan that operates at under 30 decibels in full power mode. Your case should have an air outlet right in front of that fan. Now, pay attention because air rushing past a grill or other obstruction creates turbulence, and turbulence means noise. So when you have a choice between a small fan and a bigger one, the bigger fan can move the same air at lower RPMs. This means less turbulence at the exhaust grill and less noise at the fan blades. Blade size is equally important when we talk about case fans. 80 millimeter fans are standard, but many cases can fit 120 millimeter replacements. These larger fans cost a few bucks more, but use them. And in general, you want dual ball bearing case fans with four wire leads rather than the old three wire style because four wire fans can be dynamically controlled by the BIOS based on feedback from various temperature probes. There's one more piece to the noise puzzle, vibration. Obviously vibration comes from moving parts. Assuming you have good fans mounted properly, that leaves the hard and optical drives. Conventional SATA hard drives should use fluid bearings for smoother operation. And keep in mind that fewer platters means less physical surface rushing past air, or less turbulence. Also pay attention to the drive bays and mountings. It's best to place rubber grommets between the drive and its cage to dampen vibration, and always make sure the cage itself is firmly screwed or locked down. You have similar issues with optical drives. Faster spin rates mean more noise. Some optical drives feature a quiet mode you can button press in and out of. Otherwise, you'll need special software such as Nero DriveSpeed or Plexdoor's Plex Tools, both of which are free. Naturally, there are plenty of other tricks, big and small, for pursuing a near-silent PC. 
Dumb as it may sound, make sure that the cool and quiet mode options are enabled in your motherboard BIOS. It makes a big difference. Make sure you keep internal cables bundled or wrapped to minimize airflow turbulence through the chassis. Pick a case like Antec Sonata 3 that uses dual layer steel and plastic paneling to deaden internal noises. Pick an 80 plus certified power supply. A unit like PC Power & Cooling's Silencer 750 Quad scores an 84% efficiency at a 50% load. That means energy being wasted as heat is very minimal. And the power supply does this while outputting up to 10 decibels less noise than competitors, in part because the unit uses a gap between the fan blades and internal components in order to minimize turbulence. A lot of the aesthetic factors that have kept PCs out of many environments are no longer a problem. AMD's new PC platform is pointing the computing world in the right direction. Build accordingly.